Before we get into some demonstrations of how to read and write data using PySpark, I want to show you the documentation and get you familiar with the data frame reader and data frame writer classes. So I'm in the API reference. You can see the write method under the data frame class. So if you go to data frame, you should be able to scroll down and see write here, data frame dot write. When you use the write method on a data frame, as per this example here, you create a data frame writer object. This data frame writer object gives access to more methods. So this data frame writer class should be located in input output. So you can see all of the methods associated with data frame writer here. So you've got data frame writer dot text dot save as table and so on. If we want to write a file in CSV format, then we can use one of these methods. We can use data frame writer dot CSV. If we want to write it in JSON format, we can use data frame writer dot JSON. We also have JDBC to connect to external databases, and we have other formats like ORC and Parquet. So let me click into data frame writer dot CSV. This method will write a data frame to file storage in CSV format. So you can see the parameters here. Path is a mandatory parameter. This will specify the location you want to store the data. You can also specify the write mode as either append, overwrite, ignore, or error. And then you have additional parameters as well. So these are extra options. And you can see the full list under data source option. So these options are specific to CSV file format. So things like the separator, where as you know, CSV stands for comma separated files. So the default is a comma, but you can also set this to be something else. For example, a colon, a semicolon, and so on. Let's go back one level. And rather than specify the mode, for example, as a parameter inside of this CSV method, you can also specify them using methods. So if I go back a level, you can see data frame writer dot mode. And here's an example of how it's used. So you can do df. So you can create your data frame and then you can do dot write dot mode. And they've specified the mode as overwrite. And as I've mentioned, there is a write method for the various supported file formats, such as JSON, Parquet, ORC, and CSV. But another, in my opinion, better approach is to use the save method dataframewriter.save. Let's click into it. So in addition to specifying the path, you also specify the format. So this is where you would specify the output file format. So rather than using the CSV method, you can just specify the format as CSV. The method also has additional parameters. So you've got mode, but then you've also got partition by, and you can specify any options that are contextual to the format specified. Also, there's no need to specify the parameters only in this save method. You can also specify them as their own methods. So you can also use mode as a method and partition by and so on. So that is the data frame writer object. You use this to write data frames to file storage. To read files from file storage, we need to use the data frame reader object. The data frame reader object is created using the read method, and that's a part of the Spark session class. So in Spark session, you should be able to see Spark session dot read. So Spark dot read creates a data frame reader object. And as with the data frame writer object, the methods are available in input and output. Here they are. Just like with the writer, we have methods for each type. So if we want to read a CSV file, you use the CSV method. If you want to read, if you want to read a JSON file, you use JSON. And you also have JDBC to read database data, and you also have Parquet and so on. So let's click into CSV again. So again, we need to specify the path, and we also need to specify additional parameters such as the schema. So this is optional. And if we don't provide this, it will try to infer the schema. But this is basically the structure of the data that we're reading. 
We also have other parameters. And then we can see the data source option for it. So again, this is the same. We've already seen this. So you'll notice the scope for some of these parameters, these optional ones, are either read, write, or both. So for example, this is only for the data frame writer, whereas this comment is for the data frame reader. And again, these parameters and options will vary between the file formats. So if I go back, when we do data frame reader .parquet, they will have a different set of options, as you can see. And in data frame reader .parquet, we only specify the path. We don't need to specify the schema because that metadata exists as part of the parquet data. Another approach for reading the data, and again, in my opinion, a better approach, is by using data frame reader dot load. So this time you can specify the path and as with the save method, you specify the format. So is the format CSV, is the format parquet, delta, and so on. And then you also have additional options which are contextual to the format specified. Great. So I just wanted to get you familiar with the syntax and get you to understand how you need to create data frame reader and data frame writer objects in order to be able to access these additional methods that enable you to read and write data in Spark. And don't worry if this isn't super clear right now, we'll move on to some examples so you can see how it's done.